chose that music is uh, reminding me a little bit of uh, my home uh, place. It's nice to be reminded of a, a bit of a warmer environment. Hello, uh, everyone. My name is Chris Chambers, and uh, as was mentioned, uh, I'm the director of digital marketing at Tourism and Events Queensland, which is uh, responsible for promoting the state of Queensland in Australia. Uh, I'm here today uh, to talk a little bit about uh, The Best Job in the World, which is a campaign that uh, Tourism Queensland did many, many years ago. It was way back in 2009, which in internet years is uh, a galaxy far, far away. Uh, but the exciting thing about that uh, campaign for us was that it really did help change the mentality of our organisation. Uh, and sort of about a quarter or a third of the presentation is about Best Job in the World, but most of it is about some of the cool things that we've done recently that wouldn't have ever happened if Best Job in the World had never been part of our lives. Uh, I've probably, yes, I'm Australian, uh, uh, and we wouldn't normally turn up to a conference like this, but uh, this is a bit of a homage to a uh, conversation that Rodney and I had a few uh, months ago when we were talking about coming to So Me Tea, and uh, I said, oh yes, Europe would be nice, I'd love to come and talk in Europe and uh, maybe the south of France or uh, somewhere like that and then one day we were on a call and Rodney said uh, we're off to Rovaniemi, I'm like Rover, what, Rover what? Uh, and so we did a little bit of googling and Wikipedia and we got somewhere or other and there was a, a line that will stick with me forever that was during April temperatures will rapidly warm so here I stand waiting for the temperatures to rapidly warm. <laughs> Um, and uh, thank you very much. It's great to be here. Um, this is a most of the photos uh, that you'll see on the stage today have all been sourced from the this is Queensland hashtag. Uh, so we're developing quite a community there. I'll talk a little bit about that later on. Uh, and this is uh, from an island just uh, over the way from where I live, uh, taken by a guy by the name of Kieran Lusk, who's one of our, our influences that we work with regularly. Um, I've got. Thongs, foot flops, whatever you like to call on today, uh, and I've got some of these uh, limited edition uh, thongs that have been hashtagged with "This is Queensland," and on the bottom they've got our Twitter handle, um, and there's some photos later on of how people are using those. So feel free to ask the hard questions at the end of the presentation, and uh, you, you might walk home with some of these and some Queensland merchandise. So. Uh, I also wanted to uh, run through a case study, and we're at a social media conference, so let's get you guys involved. Uh, on the screen, uh, there's two case studies, uh, which I'd like to show a video much later in the presentation. It's a case of fastest finger first. We'll probably see it on the screen before I can stop talking. Uh, tweet the conference uh, hashtag with either Reef Live or hashtag Remote Control for your choice of the uh, case studies at the end. I really should have made that Tourism Victoria one a whole lot longer, so you just go for the Queensland one. But anyway, so tweak those and we'll, uh, we'll run one of those later on. But kicking off, uh, so once upon a time, uh, a long time ago now, uh, Tourism Queensland ran a campaign called The Best Job in the World. Um, it was very successful, uh, but it also taught us a couple of nasty lessons along the way. Uh, it certainly wasn't all beer and skittles by the end of the, the campaign. There were some nasty lessons that we learned and some great things that we've carried forward. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the campaign, but also just a little bit of an insight into some of the challenges that we had along the way. So the best job in the world was really our way of promoting the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, the Great Barrier Reef is a huge destination. It runs uh, over 2,000 kilometres along the coastline of Queensland. Uh, the insights that we had is that once people have gone to the Great Barrier Reef, they feel like they've done the Great Barrier Reef. Check, they've done that on their to-do list and they can move on to, to other things. Whereas the reality is, in the north, the Great Barrier Reef is very different from the Great Barrier Reef in the south. The islands are very different from the coastal destinations. So we wanted to find a way that would tell people how different the Great Barrier Reef is and that they should come back if they've been to one part to try a different part. Also, we don't believe that people truly understand what the Great Barrier Reef offers as a holiday destination unless they've had the opportunity to immerse themselves in it. Uh, from, a, from Europe in particular, Queensland and the Great Barrier Reef is a high repeat destination. Uh, something like 40% of people who come to Queensland from Europe, uh, when they come back to Australia, they will definitely include Queensland in their uh, next uh, visit. So it's very important that we had the opportunity to tell people all about the Great Barrier Reef and what there was and that if we had the chance to immerse them in the Great Barrier Reef, they would, they would do that. So the way that we approached the campaign was very different at the time, um, and it was very interesting working through the, the campaign process and how we would get people to, to apply or to register. 
but basically we ran it like a real job search. I mean, we, we wanted someone who was very good at writing and blogging and developing videos about uh, tourism destinations and that they would then share that with the world. So we ran ads in uh, some of the more traditional means, so through the paper, the job wanted sections, uh, online with uh, sites like Monster uh, and Seek. Uh, and really, this wasn't a competition to us. This was looking for a colleague who was going to come into the organisation and really contribute to our vision of growing visitation to Queensland and to Australia. Uh, the way that people applied was they had to create a 60 second video and they submitted that through to us. Uh, the first phase was all about applications, getting people to apply for the role. Um, over a period of about six weeks or so, uh, we then shortlisted those entries down to our shortlist of candidates, and that was a list of 50 people. And those 50 people were put onto uh, our website. Uh, from those 50, two people were, would be interviewed based on public vote. So it then was put back to the candidates, basically to go out and run their own campaigns about why they should be the caretaker of the islands of the Great Barrier Reef. And TQ also selected 14 people to come down to Hamilton Island for a four-day interview process. Uh, and during that time, they were interviewed. It was pretty hardcore for them. They were put under pressure. They were put in interview situations. Uh, they were put live in, on television back into their uh, home markets. They had to uh, clean the pool. They had to collect the mail and do some uh, novel things along the way. But it was very much looking for someone who could really come in and do the job well. My first lesson that we learned out of it is that great work will get your ass kicked. Um, as I said, we've been troubled by some things along the way, but all in all, the campaign did really well. Uh, we had set some what we thought were very lofty expectations. 400,000 people we wanted to visit the site in that first application period. Uh, you can see from the graph at the bottom that we had 400,000 people visit the site on one day, on the first day. Um, now, I don't know about you, but normally for our websites, that's about six or seven weeks worth of traffic. We were very surprised by the reaction, um, but the KPIs are where a whole lot of things uh, come from. In the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about some of the troubles that that created. Uh, we had done some research into what type of reaction or response we should expect, and we figured we would get about 3% of the people who came to the site in that first phase actually applying. It was pretty... Uh, intense application process. You had to go out and create a 60 second video. You then had to submit it. And so it was a bit of a, a bit of a process. So we thought 3% was good. We also wanted to maintain engagement through, this is a long campaign. So we needed to find ways of maintaining engagement and keeping people interested along the way. So those different stages that we had were designed to do that. And you can see on the graph there the different peaks and troughs of visitation. Um, and the search engine traffic was a good indicator for us of how many different people, uh, how many, how, you know, for want of a better word, how viral or how word of mouth the whole campaign went, because normally we would expect that to be a whole lot higher from search engines. Uh, Facebook was by far the greatest referring uh, domain for us. So some of the things that we learned. Um, I mentioned the KPIs. Uh, we had set 400,000 visitors as a KPI. Uh, we had uh, what we thought was a good hosting solution in place for that. We had two servers that would run the site and one that would hold all of the database files so people's videos would go onto that. Uh, but with 400,000 people arriving on the site on the first day, and that created some hosting problems. This is probably the politest way of saying it. The site crashed. Um, I remember a horrible phone call at 3 o'clock in that first morning with my boss. Uh, who was just going ballistic uh, about the site having crashed right as the UK was coming online uh, and it was creating all sorts of problems. So we had to, one of the problems that we had was that we had to re-engineer the whole hosting environment as the campaign was live. We ended up with 13 servers to run the site uh, and that was a whole new world of learning for me. Um, we also had to redesign the site. It was built in Flash, um, which there's another language from a long time ago, but it was all built in Flash and had quite an interesting navigation style where people could slide across and experience different things. We had to rebuild the site as, uh, as we were going and we were releasing versions of the site whilst the campaign was live. Um, through the uh, shortlisted phase, so while we had our 50 people, um, one of our candidates uh, uh, was involved in a pornography scandal. Uh, now for a state tourism organisation, that's a pretty awkward thing to rock up to your work and have a conversation with your chief executive officer and your minister about. But we managed it and we just kept on moving forward. 
Um, we also had people doing really wacky things. Um, we had a lady show up at our office, uh, she was local, she was from the Gold Coast, uh, with three blow-up penguins, uh, and she was pleading to the interview for the best job in the world. We had a guy jump off a bridge in Florida, uh, hoping to get attention, and all that got him was a court summons. Uh, so there was a whole bunch of new things that we had to learn, but the lessons that we learned was, great ideas are messy, and good things uh, are not, you're doing things where people haven't been before, so you're gonna learn new stuff along the way. Um, so that's a little bit about best job in the world, uh, and I guess where we came from that was that we, uh, as an organisation, learned that digital was very definitely uh, the place to be for us. Uh, we knew that we had to work with uh, digital influencers and these new content creators, and we could see the power of what content was going to be like in the future. So it really changed our organisation's perspective on digital and how we would go forward. So. Lesson number two when you're doing a blogger or a campaign with uh, influencers is that you need to impress digital influencers. Uh, it's not good enough to work with digital influencers, you have to impress them. Um, and William, wherever you are, you'll, you'll see the DI's uh, reference here. We really believe that digital influencers are a key part of our future and I'm sure you'll hear that often through uh, the next uh, few days. Um, and to that effect, Tourism Queensland is working on a project right now called Room 753. Um, and if someone can guess what Room 753 is, uh, we've got a great Queensland merchandise pack for you. Uh, just tweet me uh, with the answer and we'll catch up in the next couple of days. And I've got to confess it, uh, I, I didn't work it out. Um, so good luck. Rodney, you can't answer. Uh, so Room 753 is our digital engagement uh, project for this year. Uh, it's basically come from the insight that we want to work with these nomadic bloggers, bloggers who are constantly travelling the world and writing about tourism destinations uh, and sharing content with their audiences. But what we've noticed is that uh, amongst some of the digital influencers, they are really starting to become a little bit jaded by the whole idea of constantly travelling and they want some downtime to either just live or to catch up on the content that they're creating. So Room 753, and there's a description there from one of our current guests, Miss Malini, who's just spent some time in the Witch Sundays, uh, is a two-part itinerary. So the first part, um, I call it a, a hyper-customised touring experience. So these people uh, spend up to a week touring Queensland with a very customised trip. Uh, it's all about them. Uh, we get them to complete a survey, which is a few pages long, it's got lots of different questions, fun questions, random questions that are really designed to give us an insight into what this person enjoys doing either in their spare time uh, or just in general. Because then we weave those things into the, uh, into the visit. And as an example, uh, we just had a guy down on the Gold Coast uh, who was there over the time of the professional surfing tour and he was a surf blogger. Uh, we spent him, uh, we sent him in a camper van with three uh, surfers up the coastline. He had a chance to just hang out with them and surf breaks and do gnarly stuff or whatever it is that surfers do. Uh, and then, um, as part of his itinerary, we set him up with uh, a visit with Mick Fanning, who is a professional surfer from Australia who won uh, the World Championship. Uh, we set him, him up to go and sit with Mick Fanning's mum and have a conversation over dinner one night. And the content that this guy created out of that visit was really great, and it was the type of stuff that we want. So the first part of these Room 753 visits is a hyper-customised experience. They get out and they have a, an itinerary built just for them. They're on their own. Uh, we've got 22 of these visits lined up back to back uh, right the way through until the end of June, so there's a decent team working on it. But then the second part of the itinerary is that we put them in a quintessentially Queensland location. It's an apartment on the Gold Coast, uh, in the middle of the uh, restaurant and retail area with a beautiful view out over the ocean. And during that week, our expectations are that the guest will just have the opportunity to rest uh, and relax and catch up on whatever it is. So some of the feedback that we're getting is that uh, people are really just appreciating being able to stop for a week and have a kitchen to cook meals, home-cooked meals in. Um, they're really just enjoying that downtime. But what we're also seeing is that they are creating great content whilst they're in the room. And I might get you to play the first video now, if you don't mind. Uh, this is from uh, our first guest, uh, Rob, uh, who was just did a little bit of a tour of the room. Thank you. Really Welcome to today's episode of Stop Having a Boring Lifestyle Com. I'm on the Gold Coast at Pepper's Broad Beach. 
just checked into room 753 and I'm gonna be here for one week. I absolutely love this room and I'm excited to give you a tour, so let's get on with it. All right, here, we've got the kitchen table. A little chill out area. Potential working spot, although I think I'll be over in the living room, which we're about to see. Here we've got the bathroom. I don't know what to say about it, except it's beautiful. Stand up shower, a tub, which I'm definitely gonna use. In here, we've got some place. Get my clothes since I'm gonna be here for a little bit. I might as well get quite acquainted and moved in. Got a big comfy bed with a great view, but we'll get to that in a minute. We've even got my dog. My dog Charlie's here. We've got a flat screen TV, and in here is kind of, this is where I'm gonna be spending almost all of my time. Nice flat screen TV, comfortable looking couch, some wine to get acquainted with. Some of my golfing buddies, got a nice kitchen, it's been a while since I've had a nice kitchen, we'll probably do a little bit of cooking at some point. Um, let's see, the fridge, perfect, we've got some beers on ice, and now let's see, kind of, there's a lot of nice hotel rooms in the world, but I want to show you a view that I'm definitely not going to get sick of. I'm going to be here for a week. This is called Room 753. It's an initiative by Tourism Queensland. I'm beyond excited to be here. It's been a busy week last week in Australia. Now I've got a week to just chill out. I'm basically going to be catching up, doing some work here, exploring some of the local cuisine options, some of the nightlife options, play a game of golf, do some kiteboarding, and take a tour of a brewery. So I'd love to continue, but I'm really eager to start opening some of these bottles and getting settled into these new environments. Sorry about the, the wind in that, obviously he's up pretty high. Um, so, so far, um, th these results uh, that I've got on the screen until the end of February, but I, I just got an email through overnight from a member of the team with a bit of an update on uh, how the campaign's going. Uh, it's important to note that we're not uh, focusing on reach as part of this, um, uh, this campaign. And that's actually been one of the difficulties internally, is communicating that sometimes our really important guests don't have massive audiences. Sometimes they are just small communities and smallish communities who have very engaged audiences. So that's been one of our challenges, is how do we communicate the value of some of these visits when you're not talking about people with hundreds of thousands of followers on Facebook or millions of followers on um, Google Plus or whatever it might be. So some of the... Um, uh, reach so far though, just to give you a bit of an idea of the type of content, so far um, over 20 blog posts, 100 Facebook posts, excuse me while I read this, um, over 300 Instagram photos, uh, 70 plus Google Plus posts, and then it goes on and on and on. So we're really trying to get people to create different content that can be published across a whole range of channels. Most importantly though, we're asking each of our guests three questions, and three questions only when they leave uh, Queensland. One, uh, would you recommend Queensland as a holiday destination? Two, would you recommend the destination to other bloggers? And, and three, would you work with uh, Tourism Queensland in the future? And so far, the scores for all of those are at the high end. Um, we haven't had any uh, unsatisfied uh, guests. So that's a little bit about how we work with uh, digital influencers at the moment. The third lesson that we learned is that we need to share the heavy lifting. Uh, this is probably something that other guests, uh, other speakers will talk about uh, as well over the next couple of days. But we really believe that we need to find ways of removing ourselves as uh, creators of content and become more curators of content. So go out there, find the content that either influencers or guests to Queensland are, uh, are generating and find ways of publishing that through our channels. Um, the way that we're doing that now, uh, one way that we're doing that now is by trying to grow the use of the hashtag This Is Queensland. Um, I've got, uh, that's Brisbane, that's my home city uh, on a summer's day. Uh, and then on the, your right, there's two, a couple of different types of skyscrapers, which are grass. The top one showing 
the uh, percentage growth month on month in the use of the hashtag, and even in that last uh, month, which is February, uh, it was just over 10%, so it's growing quite quickly still. And the bottom graph is showing the number of photos that are there. Uh, when I had a look on Monday, there was nearly 55,000 images, which isn't a lot, but it is a lot more images than we've got in our brand library that we can use to publish through our social channels. So we're regularly tapping into these uh, content pieces and sharing them out through our channels, uh, especially like Facebook and some of those other places. So how are we growing uh, the use of the hashtag? Um, this is a photo by, the, by a guy by the name of Gary Norris, and Gary lives on the Gold Coast, um, and Gary's become like a friend of the digital team and of Tourism and Events Queensland. Uh, we invited him along to events uh, just a couple of weeks ago. We organised an Insta meetup around Gary where uh, we published through our channels that we would be having an Insta meet at a certain time and place and that Gary would be hosting it. And there were tens of people who showed up. Uh, they, Gary really loved that because it was an opportunity to meet more locals and people interested in photography. And we really loved that because the people who were there were using our hashtag. Some of the other ways is small gifts. Thongs. Uh, they're being very popular, actually, surprisingly. Um, share the content. Uh, you know, people are very excited when Tourism Events Queensland shares people's uh, content out to our Facebook audience. Uh, we have uh, over five, or nearly 500,000 uh, connections in Australia and over a million globally on Facebook, and people are very proud when they see their content shared out through there. Uh, we've also invited Gary to be one of our guests on Room 753, so invite these influencers to be part of your programs. Another way that we're uh, encouraging use of the hashtag is we're talking to the tourism businesses. Uh, in Queensland, there's nearly 2,500 tourism businesses that we work very closely with, um, and we regularly encourage these tourism businesses to hashtag their own photos with our This Is Queensland hashtag when uh, they are publishing content to social media. Uh, and we do that basically by telling them if they want us to be aware of their content, the best way to do that is just use that hashtag. Don't email us when you put a new photo out, don't ring us, just hashtag it with This Is Queensland and we'll see it when their content goes live. Live, excuse me. Uh, we also regularly share their content and we send digital influencers to those uh, businesses that are active in the social space so it encourages them to, uh, to, to share their content. Digital influencers. So this is a photo taken by one of our guests on Room 753 from the top of Q1, which is a big tower on the Gold Coast. And uh, we then um, include the This Is Queensland hashtag in all of the documentation that we provide to uh, these people as they arrive. So it's on the front of their itinerary, it's on their welcome letters, uh, we talk about it to them in advance. So they're really encouraged to, to use those hashtags. And one of the um, current popular ways is our own staff. Um, so this photo is, I have no idea why her name is Piggy Stingray, but anyway, this is Jane Webster. Jane is a member of our FAMIL team, so regularly out organising uh, itineraries for visiting media and trade, out of the office a whole lot more than any of the team in the digital marketing team, as you can tell by my fluorescent light tan. Um, but they're out there, they're taking photos and they're actually sharing them. The great side of benefit of this is that we're also educating other members of the TQ team about digital, so they become a whole lot interested. Um, so they're some of the ways that we're encouraging sharing, and of course then we take that content then and publish it out through Facebook. Build your platforms is uh, the fourth lesson, uh, including the ones you rent. Uh, I'm sure this will come up a lot over the, the next couple of days, but uh, Facebook for us is a very valuable asset. Uh, alongside our email database, it's probably one of our most valuable assets. Um, so we believe that we need to build our connections in social so that when we've got campaigns, uh, when we've got great content, we can share that out through those channels and have a ready-made audience to tap into. Uh, when Best Job was launched, uh, we had 34,000 connections on Facebook. Uh, as I mentioned, we've now got over a million, uh, which creates a whole bunch of new challenges. But what we learned through Best Job was that those 34,000 people were really keen to help each other out. It really was a community then, where people, if they were having troubles loading their videos or getting questions answered, they could go to Facebook and they could get those questions answered a whole lot quicker than by emailing or trying to phone us. There's just a chart I've put in there about organic reach. Uh, I'm a bit short on time, so I'll leave that one and I'm sure it'll come up in some of the other presentations. 
listen in, engage, but not in a stalkerish, creepy kind of way. So um, one of our other initiatives is uh, what we call internally surprise and delight. Um, and surprise and delight is basically where we have set up in Hootsuite a whole bunch of search filters and terms uh, that we are using to listen in and to understand what people are enjoying or doing on their Queensland holiday. We then look for the right opportunity to jump in and thank people for talking about Queensland or the experiences that they've had. Uh, it's been very successful. We've been running this since June. Um, we're not making a big song and dance about it. For us, this is not a PR activity. This is a, an activity aimed at enhancing guests' experience in Queensland. Um, there is a video on YouTube, uh, which is WestJet. Um, they did a great example of this type of work. Um, I'm sure someone will tweak the link quicker than I can talk about it, but if you, you'll definitely be able to find that on YouTube. Some of the ways that we're using um, surprise and delight are, we, had, uh, we received a tweet from Shane, uh, and Shane's family has uh, come to Queensland and to Australia. Um, and because they've used a hashtag or a handle, we noticed this conversation, and we messaged him back something saying, you know, don't worry, we'll look after him, uh, after them. And by the end, we found out where they were going, and we shouted them a day at Australia Zoo. Australia Zoo is Steve Irwin's um, zoo on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, the great thing out of that is that they've then photos that these guys have taken and shared that out through their social channels. Uh, another example is this poor lady's uh, thongs broke on her walk home um, and she felt like a bit like a bogan, a redneck. I don't know what the thin phrase for that would be, but anyway. Uh, so we, um, we we saw this message and we sent her uh, a care pack with some new thongs and some Queensland hat and then and Queensland merchandise, and she tweeted that out about it. And this is probably this is a great example of um, a couple travelling the Queensland coast. So that's a very popular holiday for people who come to Queensland to travel the length of the coast. Um, these guys um, engaged with us. They asked us some questions. They wanted some recommendations uh, within Cairns. Uh, there's a great restaurant in Cairns called Red Oak Grill, which serves kangaroo and traditional Australian food. So we shouted them a meal at the Red Oak Grill and they published some content out about it. The last lesson that I'd like to share is to take a road less traveled. Um, and for us, if we had never stepped off uh, the normal campaign activity, if we hadn't tried to do something like best job in the world, uh, we would never be where we are. Uh, so, try new things, take calculated risks, and learn. Um, I don't know... I've realised a challenge with my process, which is that, of course, everyone said they wanted to see the Queensland case study. So, um, if we could roll the Queensland case study, uh, this is an example of a, a different project that we worked on last year called Reef Live, where we broadcast live from and under the Great Barrier Reef for 12 hours. It was streamed through YouTube and we encouraged audience participation through various social channels. Um, if you could play the Queensland, the Reef Live video, please.
Queensland's Great Barrier Reef today, marine biologist Richard Fitzpatrick is about to start a 12-hour dive on the natural wonder. He'll broadcast to the world via Google, showing off the wonders of the reef. And thank you for joining us. And as the man said, welcome to Reef Live. We're sharing the Great Barrier Reef with you in a way that has never been done before, with a world first. and another little sub-learning, all, all good campaigns need a hype reel. Uh, so thank you very much. I look forward to spending time with you over the next two days. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Chris, for this very inspiring kick-up of So Me Tea. Um, and um, I'm guessing that a lot of people are trying to ask you a few questions. I think we have someone with a mic in the room. Oh, the mic is here. <laughs> It's on? Should be on. All right. First question is over here. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I have a question for you. Money. Money? Um, ha has your budget increased with, uh, if you showed for, for, from the first campaign, very su successful, best job in the world, has that given you a bigger, a bigger wallet? Yes, it has, uh, but where we've seen the growth is not necessarily within the digital team, um, and I see that as a good success in that our budget has stayed pretty much where it has, but there are many other parts of the organisation now doing digital work, uh, which means there's more investment in digital across the organisation. Also, our organisation's budget has been decreasing, I'm sure, like many others over the last few years, so the digital budget has stayed pretty firm with where it was. So the budget has certainly grown, but in other ways. Thank you. Other questions? I know it's early, but I'm sure there are some more questions in the audience. <laughs> um, Chris, uh, one of the things that struck me, uh, which I wrote down, is that uh, good ideas are messy. But usually when I come to my boss with a messy idea, uh, I do not get the budget. <laughs> so how, how did you arrange that? Because it kind of feels like this whole thing started uh, uh, something new for you, uh, but it needs to start with something big. So how did you get that done? Yes, so the, um, the short answer is uh, lots of documentation. Um, so with the, with the Best Jobs in the World campaign, um, we were talking about getting people to apply for a job through a video. Uh, which sounds very easy, but the logistics of that are very, very complicated. There's yeah. approval processes, there's review processes, you know, there was lots of inappropriate content that was being submitted by people through those videos, so we had to work through all of those ways of making sure that only the content that was yeah. relevant would make it out there. So the documentation for the projects was pretty hefty. Yeah. Um, the website um, spec doc was probably close to 80 pages, and that talked through everything that had all of the wireframes and everything in it. So be specific with those things, but also be flexible enough to know that things will change along the way. Um, so we have to, um, with the Best Jobs in the World campaign, we have to change our approval processes significantly from where we originally thought. So building that flexibility. 
That's kind of nice to see that you, you too had to do all the, all the legwork before you actually could launch this idea. Um, it's nice to see that you do a lot of um, uh, new campaigns and they focus a lot around social media. Have you, do you feel that your budget's been shifting more towards social media? Uh, I think it will shift. Uh, I think in the next six months it will shift even further to social media. Uh, I, I referenced the organic reach of Facebook. Um, with, on that slide, um, one of the things I didn't mention is that uh, we're really trying new ways of using that community. So instead of just globally publishing uh, content to the full million, yeah. we're actually talking to much smaller audiences within that. So our people talking about this statistic is actually, if you look at it, it, yeah. it looks very bad. Yeah. But there are some times when, in, in a certain day, we may even be publishing content to a thousand people, yeah. uh, or to fifteen hundred yeah. people. Uh, obviously, what that means uh, with the organic reach dropping off now is that we need to be moving money to actually promoting the content that we're putting out through yeah. those social channels. Yeah. So it will need it, we will need to shift con content budget or media yeah. budget to actually promote that information. And how much of your budget would you say you do you, you, you already spend on on social media? Uh, yes, okay, so it's probably, uh, if you take out the content creation and all of that type of thing, uh, of my budget, it's probably uh, 20, oh, of media, it's probably 30 or 40 percent of, of my budget, yeah. Is, it, is there anyone in the audience who actually tops that, 30, 40 percent of budget on social media? No one from Canada here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe any other questions from the audience? Yes. yes. Hello. Hello. I, I just had a question about where your inspiration for these campaigns come from. Are you the brainchild behind this, or is there a committee, or is it over a few pints? Yeah. Where does it come the from? The best job in the world uh, was definitely a collaboration between uh, our agency at the time and a group of probably six TQ, TQ employees. So uh, mostly within the marketing team, so myself, a few of the other managers, and our marketing executive. They pitched an idea. The idea that we went out with, uh, the agency pitch rather, was very different from the idea that we ended up. Uh, I think the first idea was let's give away an island or something like that. Um, so we moved a long way for that and that was definitely a collaborative um, approach. Uh, our agencies would probably say that we're difficult clients, uh, but we are very particular and we know what works for us. So we like to work with them through a collaborative approach. We're definitely imaginative. Do you, do you have a, a little teaser for what your next big idea is? Is there mm. something you're working on? <laughs> um, no, we are uh, moving more to more frequent activity. Um, so uh, more social media activity that's not big bang type campaign things. There's 13 destinations in Queensland that we need to promote. Uh, so we're doing things for each of those that probably not going to be as noticeable as this job in the world, but probably more effective. I think we still have time for one last question. Is there anyone else in the audience? One quite technical question. You were mentioning about YouTube Live. What kind of experience do you have of using YouTube Live with your your yes, so we uh, that Reef Live was broadcast through YouTube Live. Um, you, you talk about uh, making sure that you um, calculate for any of the risks or the things that go wrong. Um, and I remember a conversation with Reef Live where we decided to use that as the platform because it's backed by YouTube, Google, big companies, nothing ever goes wrong. On the day of our broadcast, YouTube Live was down for globally for an hour and a half, uh, right before we were due to go live. Um, it was frenetic. Um, thankfully, they're a good partner of ours, and we had a direct line of people over in the States who were, they worked on fixing our thing first as a priority, which was kind of nice. So my first uh, experience was not so good, um, but uh, over the course of the day, it worked brilliantly for us to be able to do what we needed to. Uh, I don't know what you what you probably couldn't get from there is that behind the scenes there was a full TV studio basically running the broadcast. So you need to invest in that side of the project to make sure it all worked properly. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chris.